Oh my goodness, guys. So everyone speaks of intimacy with Jesus and we all want that. We all want that in degrees, higher degrees. And eventually when we get to heaven, all sin will be removed from us, all death, all of this fleshy body be removed, replaced with a glorious body. And we would be able to experience communion with Jesus 100% without hindrance, without blockage, right? But here on earth, we continue to die to what's mortal, die to sin, die to fleshy things like indulgences or die to um, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, all those things that hinder our hearts from connecting with Jesus in such a way, the most beautiful form of prayer. So if you guys don't get what I'm talking about, please watch the previous video on about what Jonathan Edwards' wife, how she explained this deep connection. It's beautiful. And so I remember I tasted a tiny bit, oh my goodness, a tiny bit of what she went through just for a moment. It was like for half of a day she experienced that sweet rapturous connection for like three days non-stop and i'm like oh my goodness that is so awesome i experienced it for just a few hours and it was the most amazing experience it's like all the pleasures of and comforts of the world does not even compare and they're and people who are in prison, like some Christians, they were in prison for their faith. And then one person would ask them, wasn't prison like, you know, hell? <laughs> and he was like, nah, hell is where Jesus isn't. But Jesus was there with me in that cell. And I'm telling you, that jail cell shone like rubies. And you might be like, what is he talking about? But there's this fellowship that we are allowed to partake in the fellowship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that God has been in fellowship with for since eternity past and will continue so into eternity future. And we little tiny human beings are able through believing in the gospel, through believing in the sacrifice, being cleansed by the blood of Jesus, being filled by the indwelling Holy Spirit, able to partake in this sweet fellowship that Father, Son, and Spirit has been sharing in. We get to join in on that. And so I was just at work, you know, like doing inventory, stocking shelves. And then one day the Holy Spirit, he, he would ask me these questions to get me from falling asleep, you know, because sometimes I would be so busy in my work that I'd forget Jesus, forget, and then the Holy Spirit would be like, ahem, 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 you know, and he's like, I can't, I'm getting bored here, and so I would like, let me ask you a question, and I'd be like, oh, oh, fine, question, okay, what's the question, Holy Spirit, and he'd be like, and he'd ask this question, you guys could ask yourself this question, okay? But he asked me this question. He was like, if you were to replay a scene from the Bible over and over again, what scene would that be? A scene that you just play, replay, play, replay, like that over and over again. And then I thought about it. <laughs> and then, um, and then I told him, I made a deep search within my heart, okay? Deep search, deep within the deepness of my heart into the secret place. And then I came across this verse. It's more like half a verse, but I came across this verse and I was like, Holy Spirit, I would just play and replay this scene over and over again. Then Holy Spirit, like, what scene is that? Ah, when God walking in the garden. This is the, the scene I play. It's in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And there's a comma. <laughs> oh my goodness. Listen to this. Okay, you got your Bibles open? All right. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Okay. And they, speaking of Adam and Eve, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden 
in the cool of the day. And then I stop right there at the comma. And then I go zip, replay. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Zip, replay. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And I would just like meditate on that. Oh, the sweetness. And they heard the sound of the Lord God. And then you could just envision in your mind God walking through the garden. His, the train of his robe just filling the place. And the coolness of the wind, the coolness of the Holy Spirit. The sweetness, the sweetness of God as he walks through the garden. Oh, the glory of his light and his beauty. Like, I just like have that scene in my heart replaying over and over again over and over again and then the holy spirit caught on that okay and then he asked me again why that scene the holy spirit asks very deep questions because he wants to get you into the secret place into the holy of holies where he is dwelling he's drawing you close to him okay and then as i meditated on that verse my heart just cracked and then my cold heart opened up like like a blossoming flower it opened up and then the love of god just shot right into there it's like like a one track mind like we were thinking of the same thought like he was sharing with me his thoughts he was sharing with me his heart and then he shared his heart with me like it was like a trail of light hitting right into the center of my heart like my heart opened and his life goes shot oh my goodness and I just started bawling right in the middle of the store, right in the middle of my workplace. I just started weeping and weeping and weeping and weeping because this is what he said. This is what, what he shared with me because he was like, then he said to me, he was like, Intava, the whole book is all that I went through to change the second part past that comma because after the comma it says and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden could you imagine how God felt I'm just gonna think of a small example like Anyone who's ever owned a dog, you open a door to your house and your dog runs up to you and greets you and kisses you and gives you the little doggy hug, you know? And then what if you walked in one day and your dog took one look at you and turned and ran and hid from you? How would you feel? Imagine years after years, centuries of your dog running up to you and giving you a big hug and a big kiss, that beautiful embrace and fellowship. And then one day, one day, your dog decided to one day look at you, then run and run with his tail between his legs, running to go hide from you. How would you feel? That would break any dog owner's heart. Now imagine, how about your kids? You open the door, your kids in their little diapers, they come running, your little toddlers come running and they come and hold you. They're like, hi mom, hi dad. But then what if one day your kid didn't show up? Your kid was running and hiding from who? From you and, and us without a heart as loving as God. God's heart who's so pure, so perfect in love could you imagine how his heart must have broken? How it must grieved his heart so when he saw that? 
And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. That one comma. And then God told me that he went through all this. The cross, the crucifixion. It's not just that. You think God only felt pain when in the New Testament, when Jesus came down to earth? He felt pain throughout the Old Testament every single time that his children turned away. Every single time his children traded his glory for some kind of idol. Every single time his children disobeyed him. Every single time Israel went back to Egypt to ask Egypt for help. Every single time you could just look all through this. Every single heartbreak. You think God's heart was broken only when Jesus died on the cross. No, his heart was broken all through that. Every saint, every martyr, every saint whose blood was shed, you think that did not break his heart too. And he did all this just so that finally, the second part of this sentence would change. So that instead of us hiding from God, from his presence, we would run to him and embrace his presence. You know, he did this so sad. But it was, it's so beautiful that God would go through all that just so finally when we hear the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, we would no longer hide, but we would run to him and embrace him and call upon him and worship him and have fellowship with him. Could you, could you imagine in heaven finally? when Satan's overthrown, when the new heaven and the new earth is born. And then, can you envision the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day? And then multitudes of his children from every tribe, every nation, every language, dressed in white, in their new glorified bodies, with harps and lyres, running up to God, being like, Father, we're here. Here we are. And then God with his outstretched arms, taking us all in to himself. That is beautiful. And so I would read that verse. And then I would go to Song of Solomon. And then I would read Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 16. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 16. Awake, O north wind, and come, O south wind, blow upon my garden, let its spices flow. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat its choicest fruits. Okay, I'm going to read that again. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 16. Awake, O north wind, and come, O south wind, blow upon my garden, let its spices flow. Let my beloved come to his garden and eat its choicest fruits. So when you're saying that, you're opening your heart to this, and then, like, I felt his presence in such an overwhelming way. And so I was just meditating on that. Like when when God shares with you his heart, you can't help but meditate on it. And then at nighttime, when night came, I was sitting by the window and I was still thinking about everything that God went through to redeem us back to himself, to bring Adam back in. And then as I was meditating upon it, I felt the, the love of the Holy Spirit in such a tangible way, like ribbons of light flooding in and out of me, like piercing in, then out the other side, all around, then piercing in, out, all around. And then I felt like his love 
lift up my heart, crash, like, imagine an ocean crashing. And I was so awake. This was not a dream. This was not a vision. I was like wide awake and experiencing this waves, waves of his love crashing, like, And your heart just has to be open and in the right place to receive. You desire and you receive. But you have to actually, you know, desire, receive. Right in the middle is yielding. You cannot be afraid of the Holy Spirit. He just wants to love you. <laughs> when you're afraid of him, it's hard for him to love you. So you desire. And this video, the whole point of this video is to get you guys to desire this, to desire God. Capiche? Desire? And I'm telling you to yield. When you feel the Holy Spirit calling you, when you feel the Holy Spirit asking you questions, he's asking you these questions not to wonder, have you read your Bible today? You know, I wonder if you're smart enough to be a Christian. No, he's no way. He's asking you these questions because he wants to draw you closer, deeper into the deepest secret place of your heart. Okay. He's drawing you in. That's why he's asking you these questions. And then that's yielding. And then you have to open your heart to receive it. And the, well, the opening heart is part of the yielding part, but you will feel your heart open up because you'll start weeping profusely. Like, cas I call it cascading tears. It's when you weep and the weeping does not stop. It's like a weeping that you did not control. It is a weeping that the Holy Spirit controls. It's, I call it cascading because I'd be crying crying so much out of this great love but also this great pain because god's sharing his pain and his love with you and it's such an intimate emotional beautiful wondrous experience and yeah and you just be weeping tears that don't stop and you don't want the experience to stop you want god to continue to share with you you want to continue to have that heart to heart. He says we are one spirit with him. One spirit, heart to heart connection. We all want that. That is deep prayer. And to better understand this here, Spiritual Progress book by Madame Guyon and Fenelon. Incredible writers. They detail it out. So precise. And also Eric Gilmore. So that experience kept on happening for a few hours. And then unfortunately I went to sleep, <laughs> but as I was sleeping, I still experienced it. But then the next morning, oh man, I wanted it to continue so bad, but I will be praying for that. And I'll let you guys know if it happens again for now. Let me pray with you guys. Father God, hallowed be thy name. I pray, Lord, please open our hearts to desire Jesus, to look upon his beauty, just as you always do, Father. You have been looking at Jesus, gazing at his beauty and delighting in him since eternity past. And you've invited us into that fellowship with Jesus, your one and only son, through his blood, Lord, we pray may Jesus receive the full reward for his suffering. Oh, how he longs to hold us in his arms. I pray, Lord, please set our hearts to desire this, a deeper connection with Jesus, to desire him, that we may be trusted with his heart, that he may share his love with us and his love and his thoughts and his feelings with us, his bride, Father God. We pray, please purify our hearts, for the pure in heart see God. 
we pray, Lord, set our hearts that we may desire a deeper, intimate connection with Jesus, with your Holy Spirit, with you. Please help us yield to your Spirit's beckoning as he beckons us to go deeper. And I pray, please help us open our hearts to receive you. Thank you, O oh Lord God. Please draw us, your children, to your garden, that we may walk with you and fellowship with you in the garden, in the cool of the day. You've paid such a great price, Lord, and your heart was grieved for so long. We pray that we may spend our whole lives ministering to your heart, O oh God. Our whole lives and all eternity just ministering to your heart. For all things flow from that. May we minister to you first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you later, guys.